Thank you again ever so much for seeing us, Miss Dela Cruz. I know that Mother and I are a little bit beyond the normal age to be wanting to be adopting a child. Mr. and Mrs. Kent, first of all, thank you so much for your time. We have given your application a very deep and thorough review. And unfortunately, at this time, we are unable to place you within child. I, I am truly sorry. Why not? We have a loving home. We own our own farm. I do not understand. Calm yourself, Mother. It's just not in our stars. You calm yourself, you old fool. I do not understand this, and I want information right now. Mrs. Kent, there is no need to raise your voice. The answer is quite simple. You are not financially stable enough to have a child placed in your home. One third of your income you give to charity and you drive a pretty beat up pickup truck. The only credit you have is from JD Byrider and from a sewing machine from a rent -a center. So please forgive me when I say this, but short from a child falling from the sky, you will never have a child placed in your home. What the hell is going on here? Well, Miss Adoption Agency, I don't care what you think. Any child would be fortunate to have Jonathan and I raise him or her. We'll take any child, any age. Well, short of that child being extraordinary, he'll never have a chance in your home. You can go to hell, Mr. De La Cruz. We'll get a child, and you'll see. And he will be extraordinary, sir. Any child we raise will be a super child. Super. Super. 
goddamn JD by rider. Language. Where's your family, little boy? Maybe he's one of those Mexican fellas snuck up from over the border. Maybe we should call ICE. Uh, no, Jonathan. He's white. We don't send white kids back. Well, little boy, who are you? Well, I'm from this place called Krypton, and let's just say it is fabulous. Mm -hmm. But I need to get out of the sun because I burn like a lobster. Well, we need to get this little fella down to the church, Pastor Phelps, to get that gayness out of him. Or put at least six inches of it in him. Oh, you're right. Excuse me, I need to go get my crystals. I'll be back in a jiffy poo. <laughs> Honey, I'm no expert on how little fellas treat one another, but I think he's in for kind of a hard time here in Kansas. Jonathan, he'll be our boy, and we'll love him no matter what he is. All right. But here in rural Kansas, he's going to have to keep that kind of shit undercover. So, please be careful with these, because this is like all I have left from Krypton, and they are like, totes stylish. Yeah, you need some help? Oh, thank you. Oh, I so like sweet. that bag. That's Aww. so cute. Thank you. Hey, honey, I found this in one of Clark's bags. Do you know what it is? That poor old lad. Yes, I do know what it is, honey. And I don't think it's a healthy thing to be using really too often for that young fella. But I, so I think we're going to have to keep it from him. I think the thing to do is to hide it. Where should I put it? In the basement. Deep. All right. So that's why they call me the yellow guy. Really? So this is your retirement, then, is it? Tonight, 8 o'clock. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Five minutes to go, man. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, I'm on the floor, yeah. right well, Don't worry about it. Nothing ever happens here. <laughs>
<laughs> We're concerned, Pastor Phelps, that our son's just leaning a little bit too feminine in his persona. I, in my lifetime, the masculine persona has undergone some change, but he's changed a little bit too much. We're not expecting any kind of uh, Burt Reynolds, but on the other hand, he's got a little bit too much uh, Liberace going, if you know what I mean. I understand. I love him just the way he is. I, I don't want him to have to change. Hey, Father. How are you? I'm a pastor. I'm not your father. Okay, Big Daddy. Terrorist hey. fist bump. Oh, okay. Mm, there <laughs> you are. Hey. Hey, Mom. Hi, Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. Mm -hmm. How are you? I'm good. Oh, that's super. Are you going to let me borrow your boots next of Saturday? Of course I am. I gave you a promise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is this about? You just call me up and it's like, come out here for a picnic. And it's like, okay, I love picnics. <laughs> it's not a picnic. We're here to talk about your homocynicity. What's that? To, you have to straighten out. Straighten out. You have to fit in like the rest of us. <laughs> we I, love I, you, I, son. I don't we get what this you. is about. It's about you. You're, you're too effeminate. You need to straighten up. You need to. We need to fit in with every. I mean, you need to fit in with everybody. You have to be normal like the rest of us. Is it because I'm wearing blue? Is that what it is? Because you know, I mean, blue is kind of my color. Blue is so 90s. So 90s? I mean, I mean, girl, you have no clue. It is coming into fashion like nobody's business. With red boots, really. These are my favorite boots. These, my father gave me these boots. My real father. I'm sorry, daddy. Um, but yes, these are my favorite boots. It's red? no, don't tell me. It's the zipper, isn't it? It's too naughty. It's the zipper. It's the red leather. It just, <sighs> it just doesn't fit in with normal society. Oh. That is ridiculous. I get so many compliments on these boots every day. You have no clue, Big Daddy. Oh, I have a clue. I mean, I mean, I understand that you think they're nice, but they don't I know fit they're nice. In, they don't fit in with a normal society. You have to be demure, <sighs> bland, like me. So we can, I mean, you can fit in with every. Well, society. what's the point of fitting in? I'm not like the other people. That's I happen right. to be That's super, right. Right. just to let you know. So why should I worry about fitting in with other people? because that's the way to survive. <sighs> Look, I came from Krypton. I am a different person than you people. This I is really just understand. how I am. You have to get used to that, honey. And that whole outfit, I mean, the big S on your shirt. It, this stands for hope for my people. Hope starts with an H, you idiot. I thought of that. He's our special boy. We love him just the way he is. I, I, I do agree, he is special. Oh, stop it. I don't mean that way. Oh. You need to fit in with society. You have to be normal looking like the rest of us. Shh. Nonsense. I'm going to go get a Manny and pay with my friends. I don't care what y'all say because this is super. You're so handsome, son. We love Thanks, you. Thanks, Mom. I'm going to go get a Manny and a Petty with Flash. I'll be back in a couple hours. All right. Bye. Bye, Big Daddy. Have fun, dear. Thank you. I'm so proud of him. But you could be so much prouder. I don't think I could get any more proud of my my special, flamboyant, lovely son. That perfume. I smell it. That silver's perfume. Silver, are you silver? Silver, are you here? Chanel number 69. The smell of it, it silvers. It reminds me of how much I enjoy going fishing.
Bruce, welcome home. I have missed you so much. We need to talk about the future. We need to leave Gotham before you find out how bad it has become. I hope you still speak English, that they didn't turn you into a babbling moron or a St. Louis Cardinal fan. I love you. I could never live with myself if they hurt you. The moment I look into your eyes, I'm finished. The best thing I can do is stay away from you. We need to stay apart. At, at least until the next feature. It'll be a perfect way to end the trilogy. What the hell is going on here? Alfred? Sir? Alfred? Is that really you, sir? <laughs> Welcome <French>. home! <laughs> Would you care to have a suck on the glass stick? No? Hey, okay. What the hell? Where's Dick? Where's Aunt Miriam? She <laughs> sees Wayne Manor, chairs overturned, all this clutter. She's gonna beat you with her wooden spoon. You know this isn't acceptable. What happened to the city? What happened to you, my friend? <laughs> so much has happened, sir. I mean, Dick disappeared with you, and then he returned like 18 months later, and we looked for you. Um, I checked the ice cream shop, um, Pizza Hut, oh, and that nightclub you really like, Fresh Fudge. Your Aunt Miriam took your disappearance to heart of stuff. Oh, she hired like several detectives. Right now she's in Spain following up a lead. Miss St. Cloud calls here regularly. You should probably contact her at once. We never were able to find you. Was it the Dumas that did this? It was at least their money. They hired Deandra Quinzel. Fresh fudge that brings back such great members, memories of a more gentle, nicer time. So, where's Dick? Well, you were, well, we thought you were dead, so remember that. Okay, so. Dick tried to fight crime by himself, but he just couldn't win, so he called himself Darkwing. It was a dark night when it all happened. Darkwing? That uh, sounds like an extra in a Klingon porn. Right you are. Fiends will never win. You should have been killed with the fat bat. Hey, words hurt. But anyway, you should know that he's not dead. Join us and live. Why fight crime when you can have true power? See where fighting progress has gotten you? Well, what's your benefit package like? Uh, well, 401k, comprehensive dental, but no vision. Kill him. He's with me now. I shall call him Kane. What have I done? You are fulfilling your destiny. Become my apprentice. Learn to use the dark side of the Force. Oh, well, I'll do anything that you ask, but this whole Force thing sounds derivative, and I'm not going to do any weird sexual favors. Oh, well, you, you know, it's a parody. All things might happen. Just help me save Selena's life. I can't live without her, and I'm not going to let her die. I want the power to stop death. The power over death has only been attained by one. But, I believe, together, you and I can discover its secrets. 
Once, once again, that sounds vaguely sexual. Well, you know, do what we have to. Yes, yes, this is perfect. I pledge myself to your teachings, to the ways of a criminal. Good, good. The force is strong in this one. You shall become a powerful criminal. Henceforth, you shall be known as Cain, the first murderer. Thank you, my master. Rise, my friend. Tell me, who's the fat bat? Does it matter? As you said, he's dead. Where shall we rob first? A bank? A jeweler? Patience, my friend. All things in time. Forgive me, Bruce. I can't do this What alone. was that? Well, Fat Bat is Bruce Wayne. I told you. How many morbidly obese, Kyle McGraw specialists do you know in this city? No, I, I, I didn't say Bruce. I, I said Juice. Juice. Juice Newton. That, that's my girlfriend. Juice Newton? Selena Kyle, you certainly get around. Hey. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. Do that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dick is a criminal? And who the heck is a Selena? Dick is dead. The monster that remains has nothing to do with your former assistant. Selena was his wife. When he turned to the Squiddler, she ran off with some vacuum salesman. I think it was from Spokane. But anyways, later she became the Catwoman, which is a female empowerment anti-hero. Can't believe the dick turned to cry. It's like my brother. So, Alfred, um, what? Tell me about the Fat Cave. <laughs> I'm renting it out to a Sasquatch. A Sasquatch? Yes, a Sasquatch. Well, well he's a French Canadian one and he calls himself Le Squatch. <laughs> I, I moved your bat suit and most of your toys to the upstairs closet. Show me. All right, I just. Can't right this way, sir. <laughs> wow. Oh. It's all in my gear. Criminals beware! The bat is back! Alfred, get me the Fatmobile! I, I saw the two Ukrainian named uh, Kaiser Sose. Um, sir, Gotham really has changed. Perhaps it's time to retire. Sometimes a man needs, needs to become something greater than himself. Um, like uh, transgender or intersex? I'm not even sure what those words mean. But until then, I fight alone. Well, good luck, sir. Um, I have a three o'clock with Madame Cleo's rub and tug. The is back. Ha ha ha! Honey, these glasses you've set out are a bit uh, provocative, to say the least. Really? I kind of like them. Uh, I got them at Pastor Phelps' garage sale. Oh, that explains it. Hey. Hi, Clark. Sit down. Okay. Oh, Dad, those overalls look fabulous on you. You've got this whole farmer vibe. It just works. <laughs> Son, now, there's, we can't help but notice that there's certain things about you, your mannerisms, that you need to keep undercover a little bit. Here in this house, we fully accept who you are and where you've come from. But those other things out there just might not understand. Don't be silly, Jonathan. Now, Clark, the real reason that we called you in here is you got the letter. The Daily Planet wants you to be fashion writer. Oh, that is fabulous. Thanks, Mommy. Oh, so Congratulations, son. You're going to be super. Thank you, Mommy. You're going to be super here. And 
I was listening, Daddy. I know that not everyone's going to understand what it means to be from Krypton, but I am going to rule that city. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. But your daddy does have a point. There are some people in this world who are just plain mean to people who are different. We know you're super. But be careful when you reveal who you really are. Some people will judge you without really knowing you. But last week when I was in Metropolis for my interview, my guide, her name is Lois, she asked me to go to Gotham's Fashion Week with her. I'm not even in the city yet, I'm making friends. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Your mother and I couldn't be prouder of you, son. Mm -hmm. Now listen, when you first arrived, I hid one of your bags. Inside of it was something I don't understand. I don't know if any Earth person does. It was a mysterious green glowing crystal. Clark, you should find out what those green crystals are. Your father and I cannot help you understand what it means to be Kryptonian. Shh, but Mom, I'm not Kryptonian. I'm from Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. But before you go, Clark, you should find out what those crystals are. Okay, Mom. Okay, Daddy. And I'll just have to start. Ah, uh, Pastor Phelps was here. Yeah. <laughs> We've done all we can for the boy, Mother. There's some things he's just going to have to work out on his own. European numbers are long. Hola. Aunt Miriam, it's Bruce. Bruce? I haven't seen Bruce for like 20 years, so Nice try, you pig fuck. Wait, is this Theo? Theo Gallivan? I know you were behind Bruce's disappearance. Oh, you. You just go back to your pigs and leave my family alone. Ugh. Aunt Miriam? Whatever. Wait. Wait a minute. That number's from Wayne Manor. Hello? Bruce? Bruce, is that really you? Yes. Bruce, where were you? Oh my God, we looked everywhere. Dick and I were kidnapped by Deandra Quinzel. I, I know that Theo Gallivan paid for it. It was the Dumas. I was held in a cell. I was beaten daily. It was nearly as bad as being back at Pembroke Academy. Bruce. Bruce, I'm coming home. Oh, I, I, I love you. I, I missed you. I, I knew the Dumas were behind this. I knew it was because of her. It wasn't? But let's not get into this immediately. So many women in the world. Promise me you'll stay away from her. I can't do that, Aunt Miriam. I love her. At least until I get home. She freed me. I'm on the next flight to Gotham. I can't wait to see you, Aunt Miriam. Don't let Alfred turn Wayne Manor into a flop house. It might be a little too late for that. When I got back, he was knee-deep in Cheetos, and the music was blaring really loudly. Oh, great. In fact, as I was coming up to the door, two or three people ran out, and most of them had their clothes on. Oh, lovely. I'll be right there, Bruce. Goodbye. Bye. I can't wait to see you. I'll see you soon. Okay, so now we turn the fabric over to the right side. Let's see. Then we just get the machine going. And yeah, we don't, 
don't need these anymore. Oh! What? What are you doing there, son? Sewing? It's not a good thing for him to be sewing, honey. It, it's, here, we really need you to, to take off those uh, four-eyed egghead glasses and learn how to be a man. Okay, I didn't really need these anyway. It's just because sewing, you know, that can get dangerous. Right, um, right. He almost hurt himself. Right. Well, okay, Daddy. I guess we should go do this. If... Yeah, come with me, son. I think it's time for you to learn. Oh, darn it. We were just starting to have a good time. That's all right. We'll get back to it. All right, he won't go have fun with your dad. Bye, son. Bye. Have a good day. You too, Mommy. Trust your Earth Daddy. That's a giveaway. We can't be wearing it in public. Okay. You know best, I guess. All right, now you try it. Okay. Close, close. A little more power to it, but not too much now. Not too much power. Give it another try there, son. Take this car. Oh, too much, too much power there, too much power. You're gonna, you're gonna end up breaking it. Okay. Eh. No, no, no. Here, step aside for a second. For a second. Let me, let me take this. Let me have you take, take the big axe. And what I want you to do, uh, instead of having your feet together, is have them apart. And don't use a chopping motion. Let the weight of the axe itself. Take it, take you down to it. Now go for it. It's a matter of form here. Yeah, do it the manly way. I think you got something. Let's all go to the club. All right. You got us all back to support my. Cliche to have it in an unhealthy lifestyle. Someone help me. Don't scream, Broad. Give us your bag, then you go. You're cowards. Only if they were a sort of fascist vigilante to protect us. <laughs> God, I wish I was less of a, a, a stereotypical hand-pecked weapon and, and more of a, an emotionally damaged hero type living in the, in the gray of society. Shut up. What is this, Monopoly money? I don't know, but I got, there's a flash drive on here. It could be something good on here. To whatever the hell that is, whatever they use it for. What the fuck? Canadian coin. Some check from some guy named Rico Suave. What was that? Maybe it was the fat bat. Shit, please. Fat bat. He's been gone 20 years. You want your cut or not? What about Johnny Gobbs Jr.? Dude's just like his old man. He got ripped, took a block off a building. That seems implausible. Gun violence will never help. Don't worry, I'm not gonna kill you. I want you to do me a favor. Anything. I want you to tell your friends about me. Anything. Who are you? I'm Fat Pat, and I'm back. I swear to God. Swear to me!
My friends, you created the pet pet. Action dictates reaction. Why don't I send my boy over there to rip that ugly mask off your face? This is not a suit. I am a Sasquatch. Come here. I got a trick to show you. I made this pencil disappear. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> That's awkward. Shoot him. <laughs> Ta-da! It's disappeared. <laughs> My friends, for far too long we have lived in fear of the fat man. Criminals used to run the city. Now you live in fear. I know why you only meet in the daylight. I know exactly how the fat bat fights. How he thinks. I know who is behind the mask. What's with the freak in the cloud makeup? This is the Joker. He's my number one guy. This was the, the Robin to your Batman. Never mention the name Robin. That creature is dead. We will kill the fat bat. This time, no acid to drop him into. No overly aggressive sharks for him to outswim. Kill him the old fashioned. See, a year ago, these damn cops, lawyers, would never thought about coming after us. Now fat ass back. There's hope. That's the problem. We need to crush that hope. <laughs> Soon, simple thug won't be able to make a dime in this town. It'll be just like that goddamn metropolis.
Do you ever think about the bizarre criminals we have here? Penguins and diabolical scientists with ice fetishes. Guys who leave navel-themed riddles. I mean, this is a really bizarre place. I know what you mean. I wish I lived in New York or L.A. or something. I mean, they have crime there and everything, but at least they don't have to go to city council meetings and, and explain why there's a woman in cat ears and a Halloween mask running around the city robbing the elite of their jewels. Or had to explain why a criminal who calls himself the dickhead served four terms as mayor. <laughs> and in reality, it was just his long-term plan to build a tunnel to Gotham Mint and seal the plates so he could set up his own counterfeiting ring. No kidding. Or explain to new recruits why there's a Sasquatch terrorizing the city, and a guy in clown makeup talking about Lucifer in the moonlight. Hey, hey, my cousin works in Metropolis. Uh -huh. Just be happy you never had to deal with General Zod. Wait, can you imagine going to city council and trying to explain why an isometric cube from the other side of the galaxy just released three galactic criminals and Superman is busy trying to find himself? Okay, well, my sister, she works in New York as an investment banker, mm -hmm. and get this. They have to deal with spiders, mutated spiders, going around and biting people. Can you imagine that? No, I can't imagine. Oh. Oh, it's crazy. It's disgusting. Oh, it freaked me out. I thought we had it bad. I know. The grass is always greener, right? <laughs> Ladies, the mayor would like to see you. Thanks, Selena. Thank you.
say some shit If you run the streets of God because of misfortune That the hands out justice in more than ample portions If you knew his backstory, you probably need a tissue Dad that lost his mind, he got crazy daddy issues Squashy running around, starting all sorts of drama